Greetings. I'm Dr. Kim Kyung-won of Online Surgery. I'm honored to share my surgical video clip with you. Let's look at the case of the day. Let's look at the x-ray. This is a 58-year-old male patient, and the patient already appeared in one of the surgical clips. In the past, one cast was used to place two implants in number 6 and 7 in the upper right. I did not use bone graft, and one cast was used to place two implants. I shared this clip in the past. With time, final prosthesis was delivered. You can see that here in the maxilla. About five days ago, the patient came in saying that the implant on the other side was fractured. The patient returned to my dental clinic. As you can see in number 36, this is a implant from the company starting with S, which I will refer to as S here on. You can see that the diameter is 4.1. I placed a 5.0, so comparatively it's quite thin. It's not really common for implants from S to fracture, but the patient does have the habit of clenching and grinding. And I realized that even if it is an implant from S, if the diameter is 4.1, it can fracture. The tissue level implant was fractured as shown. I checked the CT once again. Compared to the implant that I placed using one guide, which is nicely placed within the alveolar bone, not only is it thin, but it is buckly inclined. And on CT, although it is buckly inclined, the buckle plate did not melt away yet. I plan to remove the implant and place the implant again. If the implant is fully osteointegrated as shown in the case, and if the superstructure is fully fractured, it is difficult to use EFR kit. If you use trap iron burr here, the buckle plate will be destroyed. Therefore, in order to preserve it, in my case, I've mentioned this earlier, I use Fisher burr in high speed to make a slight gap, gain fulcrum, and use elevator to luxate the implant for removal. In the case of this patient, the fractured implant itself was placed more buckly, therefore, the bone is quite significant on the palatal side, therefore, I thought I would be able to place the implant immediately. I plan to place a new implant right after implant removal. This is an image taken during surgery. If you look at the image, Fisher Burr was used. I gained fulcrum here. Like this, I used elevator for implant removal. As mentioned, I tried to minimize damage to the buccal plate as much as possible. I used a Fisher Burr and I tried to avoid buccal side, mesial, distal, and palatal side were utilized to do elevation. This is after implant removal. Inferior, you can see that there's a hole where the implant used to be. If you look at the palatal side of the patient, you can see that there is still residual bone because how it was originally placed, and therefore I attempted to place the implant once again. Side cutting burr was used for side cutting guide. Pin was used to check the position. I did 2.2 drilling, however, on the buckle side, it is fully exposed, and it only engages slightly on the palatal side. Pre-mount and cover screw was connected. You can see that because we did not damage the buckle plate as we removed the implant, I decided to use SureOS and Allograft. Covered with collagen membrane and completed the case after suture. This is post-op image, as you can see. In the area where implant was removed, the TS3 5.0 by 10 millimeter implant was placed. 
It was placed so slightly deep. The position looks good. I removed the S implant, which was diameter 4.1, and on the same area, 5.0 by 10 millimeter implant was placed. In the post-op image, you can see that the TS3 5.0 by 10 millimeter implant was placed where the fractured implant used to be. You can see that the position and the distance with the posterior implant is all good. In the case of fractured implant, it was rather buckly inclined. However, the new implant has been placed in the desired position. In the post-op image, you can see that there's a space in the buckle area. I did not damage the buckle plate and therefore I used autogenous bone graft materials to do bone graft. In the case of fractured implant, you can see over here buckle plate is still there. I'm going to show you during the surgical video, but I did not use trafine burr in order to avoid the damage to buckle plate and used a high speed fissure bar and gained a fulcrum. This is the case where I remove the implant mesially, distally, or you could also use the palatal direction as well. Fortunately, we were able to place the implant in the desired position because there was residual palatal bone. The sinus floor seems to be a little bit penetrated, but it's okay and implant was placed nicely. Let's look at the surgical clip. It's been a week since the implant was fractured. More so than expected, gingival healing was achieved on the palatal side. I'm going to make paracrestal incision and reflective flap to check the implanted position. Once I've elevated the flap, you can see that there's the superior component of the implant, which was fractured, as mentioned, buckle plate is extremely thin. In order to preserve this, I'm going to use thin fissure burr and prep the site where fulcrum can be gained. The elevator is going to be used to do luxation on the implant. It was 11.5 long implant. It's not easily luxated. I'm going to use fissure bar once again. I'm going to remove alveolar bone more deeply so that fulcrum can be gained mesial distally. I'm going to try to avoid buckle plate damage as much as possible. I'm going to use elevator to luxate it. You can see that it is slightly moving. Once it's moving, I'm going to use the forcep to remove the implant. It's quite nicely osteointegrated. I'm now removing the implant. Fortunately, I was able to remove the implant without damaging the buckle plate as mentioned earlier, there was a significant palatal bone. Side cutting drill was used to prep the site for implant placement. I'm going to place it slightly more palatally compared to the existing site. 2.2 twisted drill is going to be used to make drill hole. Because it can slip, you need to pay attention. Parallel pin is going to be placed. You can see that it has been placed in a similar level with a distal tooth number 27. 3.5 by 10 millimeter one to two taper kit is going to be used to do prep. After that, 4.0 by 10 millimeter one to two taper drill is going to be used. You can slip, therefore, 
You should not skip drilling and you need to do it gradually. Depth gauge is going to be used to check the path. Unlike the original path, we're going to place a more palatally. Therefore, we need to check 4.25 by 10 millimeter drilling is going to be done. You need to hold firmly so that the drill does not slip. After that, I'm going to use depth gauge to check the drill hole. I'm going to use BA surface, therefore I'm going to irrigate it sufficiently using saline water. I'm going to place the 5.0 by 10 millimeter implant using engine. There's no buckle bone, so you need to put more strength on the palatal side. It is not easy to get a good hole. If it is difficult to you can use a periosteal elevator in order to avoid implant slipping. Implant has been placed. I believe stability is quite good. Open wrench is going to be used to remove the pre-mount. It's done. I wanted to place it slightly more deeper. When I use hand wrench, there's no buckle side, therefore it can slip out. No mounted driver is used here. Engine is going to be used to place it slightly more deeply. And after that, I close the surgery. As you can see, Buckle plate is intact in the gap area. I have used allograft called Sure Os. This is a chip bone to fill the gap. Between implant and the buckle plate, there's a gap. It's approximately two to three millimeter chip bone is being packed. Bone graft is done up to the implant top. Soft tissue is not fully healed after implant fracture. In order to get full recovery, I will use one layer of OS guide. And now I'm going to reposition the flap. As I removed the implant, there was granulation tissue. I did remove granulation tissue and after that, suture was done. Because there was buccal plate, this was not a problem. Interrupted suture was done to do suture. I did once on mesial and distal side and in the middle I completed using figure of eight suture. Suture is being done here. In the case of this patient, fortunately, although there was fractured implant, it was buckly inclined, and after implant removal, I was able to place the implant immediately because there was palatal bone. And as shown in the video clip, while I was removing the implant, I tried my best to avoid damaging the buccal wall. I did not use trafine burr, I used a fissure burr and utilized fulcrum on the mesial distal and a little bit of palatal side. Minimum bone prep was done only to the level that the elevator can go in to gain fulcrum. Because there was quite a bit of palatal wall, I was able to place the implant immediately. As mentioned earlier, if it is difficult to reposition the implant due to expose the buccal wall, Periosteal elevator or other tools should be used to hold the implant and to make it more palatally inclined. When you adjust the final depths, when you use hand wrench, the implant can be deviated. In this case, it is better to use engine and use no mounted driver to adjust the depths. That is my recommendation. 
after implant placement between the buccal plate and the implant there was a gap i used allogenic bone for bone graft utilized collagen membrane and did suture and completed the surgery thank you for watching